brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, we're going to show you how to uh, drop the tank and replace the fuel tank sending unit. This is a 1974 Pontiac Granville. Um, this process will be the, the same for basically 71 to 76 uh, Pontiac full size, which can include Granville, Bonneville, Catalina, Caprice, um, Delta 88, Buick, Centurion, a bunch of different cars. It's also pretty much the same for most GM vehicles from uh, the 50s and 60s up to the 70s. Um, items you'll need, you'll need new sending unit from 1AAuto.com, Jack and Jack stands, 5 16 and 19, it's not 9 16 sockets with ratchets and extensions. Uh, that could be different uh, for your vehicle. And flat blade screwdrivers, a pair of pliers, a hammer, and vacuum, flashlight, and a person to help you out uh, is usually very helpful. Start by uh, disconnecting the lead on our Granville. It's behind the trim panel, and this is in the trunk, uh, right near where the, the trunk latches down. There's just a little brown wire. It has a black clip. Pry up on the tab, or and then pull the wire, and then push the wire down through the body. There's a little rubber plug and then the wire will push down through the body. You can see there's another clip underneath. Small flat blade screwdriver. Pry open that clip and pull the wire down. Now you want to raise and support your vehicles. You want to put the jack stands in front of where the rear um, control arms um, connect. And you want to raise it up high enough that you can bring the tank down and out. Um, usually about, you need about six inch, the wheels hanging down and then six inches off the ground or so, which is the car is about 18 to two feet up. And then underneath you want to remove this 5 16 bolt, which holds the ground strap. And we didn't film doing that, but we did remove the ground strap and now we're going to uh, disconnect the three lines. Uh, some cars may only have two lines. Ours has air conditioning, so there are three lines. Just squeeze each clip and slide it out of the way. Then use your pliers, break the seal between the rubber hose and the metal line, and then pull off the line. Okay, and then I'll repeat that same thing for the other two. Um, you want to generally start with as little fuel in the tank as you can, but if there is fuel in the tank, take the largest line, which is your main line, use something to create a vacuum and get the fuel flowing, and if you hold that line below the tank, then the fuel will just drain right into whatever vessel you might want it put into. And you can see right here, I just drain it into a five gallon tank, and you can pretty much go until it stops. And then you want to, uh, so if you have your vehicle up on the jack and jack stand, take your jack and just lightly support the tank. Then two 9 16 bolts hold the straps in at the front. And we'll remove those. And with the straps removed, you can let your jack down slowly. And um, actually, this is a lot easier with the vehicle closer to the ground because you're just using a floor jack and you just kind of pull it down. Um, the tank is light because I've taken the fuel out of it. So just have our helper take the jack out of the way and then we both lower it right down. Use a wire brush and a vacuum and just vacuum off any of the dirt and debris that's around um, the sending area, sending unit area of the tank. We'll fast forward as I do that. Now use a hammer and a large screwdriver and you want to um, force the ring counterclockwise. There are three tabs on it. Just use your screwdriver and our ring actually comes off fairly easily. Um, force that retainer ring counterclockwise and then the sending unit comes up 
and out. Remove the rubber o-ring and then you'll want to inspect the inside of the tank. Ours is pretty clean. It's kind of a Midwestern vehicle. But if there's a lot of debris or rust and scale that you can see in the tank, you'll want to replace your tank. At 1A Auto, we do sell a complete line of fuel tanks for a variety of different vehicles. Replace the rubber O-ring, the new O-ring that comes with the sending unit. And put the sending unit down on. Just make sure it fits correctly. There are three tabs that help to locate it in place. This one with the lines on it is pretty easy to locate. Put the uh, retainer ring in around the um, lines as well as make sure that the ground strap pulls through. Then make sure the ring goes in correctly. And you'll have to push down on the ring and start turning it clockwise. Make sure all three tabs are going underneath the tank retaining ring. And then you can use your hammer and screwdriver uh, to start evenly um, twisting the ring to the, in the clockwise position or the clockwise motion and you can see I just kind of I'm not I'm not hitting it hard I'm just tapping it and switching between the three different positions to go evenly you want to make sure that these um, bumps go into those impressions in the tank retainer ring so keep driving it all the way until they are there Transfer the rubber lines. Um, if you have older rubber lines, you want to make sure that they are rated for the newer fuel. Uh, the ethanol and other things in fuel can eat away older rubber lines. Um, the lines on this vehicle were replaced within the last couple of years, so they'll still work fine. So we're just switching them from the uh, old unit to the new one. And again, it's just squeezing those clamps um, and pulling them off. Some vehicles may have clamps that have been replaced, so you may have to use a screwdriver or a socket and ratchet. But then just place all three um, of the hoses on and reset the hose clamps. Okay, I'm just going to route the um, ground wire underneath and then use a couple of wire ties uh, just to keep the, um, there's a little lip on the retainer ring of the tank and I just want to make sure that that ground wire doesn't rub against the lip of the tank. Um, so I just kind of wire tie it to the line there and keep it out of the way and just make sure it it just helps to make sure that it routes correctly and doesn't get chafed. And then just put your um, line, which I think I forgot to show taking that off the old one, but you do remove the line. It just pulls off of the old one and make sure you push it back on to the new one. And fast forward here as I just use the vacuum again and a screwdriver, um, clean off the top of the tank I use the screwdriver to just kind of scrape out of the weld and loosen up the dirt and then vacuum it out. Okay, raise the tank back up into place. Make sure that the uh, harness or the wire for the sending unit goes towards the back and then have your helper get a jack up underneath the tank to hold it in place. Before you get the tank all the way up in place, make sure that the uh, setting unit wire pulls through and push it up into the body 
And then make sure you pull it through so that it's in, there's a kind of a cavity that runs between the tank and the body. And make sure it pushes up all the way through. Set that plug. And then you can raise the jack up, get the tank fairly tight to the body. Make sure it's uh, lined up correctly. Especially working on an older car, you can just kind of line up the dirt marks on, on the tank with the dirt marks on the body. Start your 9 16 bolts in. You may have to push up on them and turn them at the same time. Um, see, they go right up in. We are using a air ratchet, but that's okay. You can use just a regular socket and ratchet. And, and I always tighten up the final amount with hand tools just to make sure that you don't break a bolt or over tighten anything. And when you tighten them up, you want to tighten them up nice and firm, uh, probably 45 to 50 foot pounds. And then we'll kind of keep the fast forward going here as we route the hoses through the clamp that's on the body and then connect them and set the clamps. And again, always replace the hoses with new hoses that'll work with the new gas. And here I'm going to reconnect the ground strap, but before I do that, unfortunately you can't see it very well, but I'm using a wire brush and just wire brushing a spot to bare metal on the body so that the ground strap gets a good connection. And then use that 5 16 bolt and tighten it up. Reconnect the uh, sending unit wire and make sure that the rubber plug is pulled all the way up through. And then you can see we turn the key on and it used to read full all the time, but now it's correctly reading a very low fuel. Thanks for tuning in. We hope this video helped you out. Next time you need parts for your car, please visit 1AAuto.com. Also check out our other helpful how-to as well as diagnosis videos.